Hello out there, Denture family. It's me again. I am back. I took my son today to see um, Avengers Infinity Wars, and it was awesome. We thoroughly enjoyed it. Of course, you know, since this is a part one movie, that um, the bad guys win. Now we're doing the first movies if there's a, a part of a two part movie. Anyway, uh, my son and I thoroughly enjoyed our time out, and it was it was really good. Um, I am a little a week and two days now post op, and as you see, this one is almost gone now, and this froze is almost gone. This one, as you can see, is all yellow in the red here. You can probably see it now. Um, it is fading, it's, but it's going to take a little while for it to heal. Um, the reason I had these bruises, and I know some of you have been through this, and some of you are wondering what it is, it's called alveoplasty. It is um, a surgical procedure that is done generally along with multiple extractions. It's where they, um, they smooth and reshape your jawbone in areas where the teeth have been extracted. Or, or if you've lost teeth in that area. And the reason they do that is it helps to optimize the shape of your jawbone to avoid complications when you insert appliances such as um, implants or dentures, or um, it also provides comfort stability with your jawbone. Um, if you see me looking off to the side, I'm checking my notes. I'm sure. <laughs> Sorry about that. But um, it also establishes a job on shape that helps to facilitate the healing process as you're going through healing. Um, it is usually performed at when they pull your, pull your teeth out. Um, they, if you have, especially if you have multiple extractions, they usually do that along with it. Because when they pull the teeth out and they pull the roots out, there's generally a, sometimes jagged edges around the bone. So they smooth that out for you. Um, it can be done as a standalone procedure, but generally if your dentist has thought ahead and planned ahead, uh, they generally do them hand in hand. If you have not had that done, you've been charged for it, that is definitely something you need to look into and check with your dentist about. And if you're about to go in for a procedure, you need to check with him and make sure you fully understand exactly what the extractions are going to um, be comprised of. It's going to be just extractions or if they're going to do alveoplasty along with it. Um, it is routine once it's been removed um, before it's been closed that he will evaluate the contours of the tissue in the immediate area. So if you don't get it done and you've been charged for it or, or it's in your treatment plan, it may be that you didn't need it. So you definitely want to check with your dentist about that. Um, basically, what they do is they go in and they surgically cut your gum. I should take the technique that they cut open your gum and um, create what's, what is called a surgical flap. And that's when they go in and um, evaluate and see whether or not you need um, to have the uh, the bony edges filed down. Basically what they're doing is they're filing it down. Um, it is usually, I'm sorry, it's easier for the dentist to identify irregularities and potential problems um, and have the needed access to improve that that area. Um, hopefully, <laughs> if you need it done, they do it at the same time rather than having to go back in later and do it. It also can help prevent bone spurs from coming out of the gums later. It doesn't necessarily eliminate the possibility of bone spurs, but it does reduce the risk. So you are less likely getting bone spurs in the future. It doesn't mean you won't. It is possible that you will. Um, but you're, the possibility is much, much reduced. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, um, it might be that the need for it is unavoidable. They might need to do a separate procedure for alveoplasty, um, especially if you're wondering why they didn't do that when you're having extractions done. They may not have been able to do it. Um, and it can be disappointing to find out that you actually need it, but that doesn't mean he didn't uh, plan it out in advance. But you do need to have that conversation with your dentist to be sure that you needed it or don't need it. Um, anyway, hang on, I'm going to mute that. Movie came on the TV and sorry about that. Anyway, um, and I'm checking out my notes over here. They generally refer to them when they're in the billing process, they generally refer to them as quadrants. It's right upper, right, uh, left upper, right lower, and left lower. See if I get the sides right or not. <laughs> anyway, um, it is a surgical procedure, and it's usually 
incorporated with your your tooth extraction process but like i said it may not necessarily have happened um you will need they will need to know the bones now i had what's called um i call my chill pills i basically had two hal halcyon pills before the procedure and then they numbed me afterwards um but i don't remember anything so i don't know exactly what that process was as i pretty much slept through the whole thing but that is the reason. And you can bruise. Now, I've not seen any. I've seen people who've had the alveopathy who've had bruises, and you usually look right around here. But um, that's probably the worst. I think I'm missing one who's a picture of one who's been as bad as mine was. Um, anyway, when they go in there and create that, they, they expose the bone. They create the flaps, and they expose the bone. And then they recontour it. They can use um, files, or they can use what's called dental pliers to, to snip the bone. Or they may use drills. Anyway, it's always a co uh, accompanied with irrigation, so they're flushing it out as they're going to. It helps wash away the debris and the blood. It helps keep the, the bone tissue moist and uh, cool. So anyway, they, when they close it, they close it up, and that's when you have stitches put in. Um, that usually needs to be removed in about 7 to 10 days if you don't have the absorbable kind. Now, I had the kind that absorbs. So my process will be, and the um, stitches that I have are already coming out. I can feel bits and pieces of them coming out, and I've pulled out a couple of little tiny slivers of, of uh, stitch. Um, generally, after about seven to ten days, once the stitches fall out or absorb in, or whether or not they need to be cut out, you're significantly healed by that point. But um, it may take up four to four to six weeks to completely heal. In case if you need any other any further dental reconstruction done, which most people don't after that. So, but after that, you need about four to six weeks of healing if you need it any more done. Anyway, that is what alveoplasty is. If you have any questions or um, any comments, just leave them below in the comment section, and I will answer them as soon as I possibly can. I've got dinner on in my instant pot. The guys are having pork spare ribs tonight. Unfortunately, I can't eat that yet, so I'm having uh, chicken tenders, which I love anyway. So, anyway, oh, I, yeah, today I did bite into a hamburger for the first time. I only took one bite. The rest of it I just tore off and ate that way. But I can chew a bit, and I did manage to bite off one bite. It was, it hurt a little bit, so I didn't do more than the one bite because I don't want to push it. And tomorrow I will be hitting up Dollywood. And seeing if I can keep these babies in on the roller coaster, I will let you know. And anyway, you guys have a blessed day and I'll see you next time.